All right, Goody, welcome to the show. I'm so excited to have you. Hey, what's up, everyone? I'm very excited to do this. Well, I picked you to come on my podcast because first of all, you're like a freaking ray of sunshine and I love that. <laughs> Every Everything you say, everything you do, you have that big white smile on your face and you are just happy and you're just living the life and making things happen and I love that. Yes, thank you so much. You know, it's it's really like, it's become my, my thing, right? And I didn't do it inten- intentionally, um, but everybody would send me, started sending me messages like, Logan, like, I love starting my day off watching your stories, watching YouTube, because you're always so happy. And I'm like, and so I started thinking like, man, like people need this. Like I, I thought like, it's just people just wake up happy all the time, or this is just how people normally are, but it's really not. And, and especially in 2020, where, you know, there's just so much outside noise around us. I think that people really need this. People really need that positive energy. Uh, For those of you who don't know me, I'm a huge, huge believer in positive vibes, positive energy, big moods, big smiles, and that those things are infectious. Those things are contagious. And, and I know how it is when I, when I'm around people who are just like vibing with me, spreading positivity, man, everything just clicks. Right. And vice versa. You can have that one negative person who is the glass half empty person type who's always complained about something can really bring down the mood, bring down the room. Um, And so I'm really big on just keeping positive people in my life, nothing but like-minded people like myself. And that's really what's, what's really kept me going. Really. I love that. And that's why I picked you to come on my show because I think there needs to be more positivity. I know it affects so many things, right? I think somebody posted that like stress hurts you worse than eating a whole chocolate cake or something. And I believe it. I believe it. 100% true. And I mean, I remember being young and going through this tough time and we all have these ebbs and flows, right? Not everybody is perfect 100% of the time, but I remember this really interesting thing. I used to work for a cattle rancher and he goes, Connie, stress makes you sick. He's like, do you know why when cows go to the feedlot, they have to all of a sudden be put on all these antibiotics and all of this stuff? He said, because they get so stressed out when they're taken off of their field in the mountains and put into this place where there's no space and no shelter and you know crummy conditions and it just taken away from their home and they're stressed and they get sick and they die so we have to over medicate them in order to keep them alive and i was like wow and for some reason that just stuck with me forever i don't know why no no you're right stress i i am stress drama negativity i i look at it all the same way i do not want it i do not want it in my life i do not want it in my body i do not want it in my soul my mind uh because it does cause a lot of problems and 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 literally real real issues inflammation uh cortisol you know a lot of people who and i'm sure we'll dive into this probably later on but you know a lot of people who do the ketogenic diet or want to lose weight uh, doing intermittent fasting and they say, Logan, I'm doing everything you say. Why can't I lose weight? And it's like, we sit down and we talk. I'm like, okay, well tell me what's going on in your life right now. Well, I mean, I didn't tell you this, but I'm going through a divorce or, you know, I'm, I'm dealing with a lot of financial issues. I just lost my job. Aha. There it is. It, it, that is it right there. And people don't realize that your hormones and stress play a huge, huge part and you becoming healthier. And so once you can just, you know, let go of that stress and look at things the opposite way, you know, a lot of people are always asking themselves, why is this happening to me? Instead of asking yourself, why is this happening to me? You have to ask, you have to look at it as like, this is happening for a reason and this is gonna teach me, right? This is gonna teach me how to become a better person, how to become a better human. And I'm going to learn from this and keep moving forward because I, I mean, I could, I could talk all day li- about things like this, but life is too short. Life is just way too short to get down about these little things. Right. Um, there's so many things to be grateful for. So many things that you should be uh, happy for um, and letting these little things like, Oh, my car broke down or my, my tires out. Like, Yes, I, I get it. It sucks, but trust me. I trust me when I say this, especially if you live in America. There are 
people that are going through much, much more worse things than you are. Just, you have to look at it that way. Absolutely. I've always tried to reflect that way myself because man, we could have it so much worse than we actually do. And that's not to say that that challenge for us isn't hard compared to somebody else's challenge because everybody perceives stress differently, but you have to kind of keep, you know, reminding yourself that the hard times are what bends and molds you and you have to just learn to deal with that. And I mean, like you said, when I'm dealing with my clients as well, all of the things are going right, including it's happened with myself where you're doing everything right. You're exercising right, but maybe there's too much stress on your body and that stress can be mental. It can be physical. I explain that to people like doing two hours of cardio day is still stress. So you have to put it all into a box and make it all come out evenly in order to see results. It all comes hand in hand. So absolutely. I love that. So first of all, I would love to have you tell your story to my listeners because you went from a not so optimal lifestyle to now like you're jacked, you're in good shape, (laughs) your family's in good shape, you guys are thriving and growing. And I think that my listeners could benefit from hearing your story. Yeah, yeah, let's do it. Okay, so for those of you who don't know, um, I wasn't always in shape. For those of you who probably just started following me, you're probably thinking like, oh man, you've always... Um, you've always had muscle, you've always been in shape. And I'm telling you guys, that's not the case. So in high school, I'm from Texas. So in Texas, you, you got to play football. That's just, that's just how it is. You play football. Right. And so in high school, I played sports, I played football. Naturally, you're going to be in shape because you work out so much. You're playing football, you're playing sports, but I mean, not really knowing what I was doing. I just did whatever the coaches told us to do, right? They told us to lift this and do that and run this far. And we did it, right? We're in great shape. And not only that, you're young. You're 16, 17, 18 years old. So your metabolism is just skyrocketed. So I was in shape then. But guess what, guys? When <laughs> I got out of high school and you go to college and you go to your dorms and nobody's making you work out, you're doing everything on your own you get caught up in this very bad habit of drinking alcohol, partying, never working out after that because you didn't have to, right? You didn't play any sports. Uh, you pretty much your sports career is over after that unless you're really good and then you can go play collegiate. But that wasn't me. Um, I, late night Taco Bell at two in the morning with your buddies. And uh, th- I lived that life for about eight years. So from, from after I hit 18, Till 26, age 26, I was living that life of just, I had no idea about nutrition, no clue. And I'm going to give my age away, but you know, this is back in the early 2000s, guys. So there was no Instagram. There was no Facebook. I feel like the fitness and health industry nowadays is so popular that I see kids in high school getting into working out, getting into nutrition, talking about macros and protein and this and that. We had no clue what that was when I went to school. If you would have said, what is a macro? I'd be like, I have no clue what you're talking about. Where, where are we going to go? You know, where are we going to go party at? Like that, that was my, my lifestyle back then. And so fast forward to age 26, I should be in the best shape of my life. This is where I'm a young man. Um, I should be fit. And I wasn't, I went to the doctor and I remember the doctor told me, Mr. Delgado, you are pre-diabetic, you have high cholesterol, you have high blood pressure, and you are, you are very, very close to being obese. You're overweight for sure, but you're very close to being obese. I was like, wow, that, that was an eye-opener, guys. So remember, I'm 26 years old. I'm married at the time. Me and my wife are both kind of living that bad nutritional lifestyle. We, 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 you know, drink on the weekends, Chinese buffets, take out pizza, late night burgers. You know, we just, we just didn't know. We didn't know what we were doing. We just thought that's what you did, right? That's your traditional American life. And it wasn't until I actually met another YouTuber at the gym one day. Now, again, this is, this is pre- all that before it's popular where it is today, where it was weird for you to record yourself in the gym. <laughs> Nowadays, you fast forward, it's like, did you even work out if you didn't film it? Nowadays, that's how it is. So it's so funny how things change. I met him. His name was Christian Guzman. 
Uh, you may know him. People may know him. He, he's very successful now, which is just, it's absolutely nuts how far at the day I met him and to where he's at now. Uh, but his name's Christian Guzman and he had a YouTube channel and I checked out his YouTube channel. We started getting into, I started getting into YouTube and nutrition and working out and the, my gym partner at the time was then my boss at my job. I told him, cause he, he knew he, he was into working out. He was into fitness. And I said, Clint, I want to look like Christian Guzman. I want to get shredded like him. He's shredded. Cause that was the term back then, 2012. You, you got to get shredded. Um, I, I'll, I'll do anything. Just what do I got to do? And uh, he goes here, follow this plan. And, and, and this, this will get you there. Okay, let's do it. So I followed this plan, guys. Come to, come to find out, I was on a ketogenic intermittent fasting plan. So I would not have my first meal until one o'clock. I would have my last meal at nine o'clock and it was all ketogenic foods. It was ground beef, eggs, um, steak, broccoli, butter, you know, just your typical ketogenic diet. And I got super shredded <laughs> and people were like, Oh my gosh, what, what did you do? What did you do? And I'm like, I'm doing something called the, the, the ketogenic diet. I made a YouTube video on it and the YouTube channel blew up because this is pre, you know, popularity of what keto was. This was so new. Like what you can lose weight eating butter, eggs, steak. Are you kidding me? No, that you, that, you don't do that. And so and again, I'm 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 going I'm I'm going about a hundred miles through my story, but because we don't we don't have three hours, it's but that good. that's essentially so. Got into keto, started making YouTube videos about it, and um, yeah, I I took it from there. I it slowly morphed into a keto channel. Obviously, over the years, keto got more and more popular. I started meeting a bunch of keto friends. The keto community was built, which is by far the best community out there. Very supportive, very motivational, very support, uh, um, um, inspiring. And yeah, and and to 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 go back to you know my wife. For those of you who don't know, my wife was also overweight. Now, it took her a little bit longer than it took me to give in to nutrition, working out. Uh, but she finally, after, you know, a couple of years saw what it, what has done for me, saw how it's changed me, not only mentally, spiritually, financially, uh, she finally gave in and said, okay, I'll get, I'll, I'll try this out. And she slowly started doing keto, but she's mostly into intermittent fasting, uh, low carb, but she lost over 50 pounds. And so now we go back. It's really crazy. We go back and we look at our wedding pictures. We're, we are unrecognizable. Uh, we are, I'm 70 pounds heavier. She's 50 pounds heavier to where we are, where we're at today. And it's, it's, it's really cool to go back and look. And it, it's very, it, it, it's very motivating to be like, wow, I can't believe the life we used to live, but you can't blame us because we just didn't know what we didn't know and that we were just living your typical traditional American lifestyle buffets, takeout, drinking beer. What's exercise? I had no clue <laughs> that that is, that was pretty much our life. Man. And it, it's so interesting to hear this, right. And that you were on top of it far before the big keto wave happened. Yep. Um, yep. I know for myself, it's kind of the same same deal where I actually had switched to a paleo diet and lost like a ton of weight. And I thought I was actually eating healthy. I wasn't going to buffets and eating out and stuff, but it was like, okay, you're having spaghetti and meatballs and garlic bread. That's home cooked. It's good, you know, and casseroles and shepherd's pie and all these things. And guess what? That stuff is horrible for you. <laughs> and so we switched to an all paleo diet. And I thrived on that, started getting into bodybuilding competitions, all that fun stuff. And then after my final season of bodybuilding competitions, I pushed myself really far. I had, didn't know I had undiagnosed Hashimoto's disease and my thyroid like totally quit working on me. So huge caloric deficit, no thyroid working, came out of my show, 
and gain 40 pounds in a month and a half. And everyone thought I had just gone on this huge bender, but I was still eating like sweet potato oh and ground turkey and spinach and just like super benign stuff. And it was really hard to be like, okay, what do I need to do to reevaluate how I can get healthy again? And there was so much um, stigma around the keto diet and the bodybuilding world. Like you can't build muscle and you're yeah. going to lose your gains and all this stuff. But I was so desperate at that point. I was like, I don't even care. I'm going to do it. So I started with complete carnivore, right? Did pretty well on that. And then I was like, I don't know if that's quite for me though. And so I started rolling it into a more ketogenic diet. And at that point is when my body started to come back. And I was like, thank God. I mean, my only theory is between my thyroid and my insulin yeah. sensitivity, everything was totally jacked up. And that ketogenic movement that I made was what I needed to get myself kickstarted back into health. And so I think as fitness lovers and professionals, we are still always constantly learning, right? I'm sure you learned something this last year that you wish you would oh, yeah. have known back when you were in college. And so it's crazy the metamorphosis we, go, metamorphosis we go through and the learning that happens with nutrition, especially. Yeah. You know, I want to, I, I, and I, I didn't mention this, but so I don't have a thyroid. Wow. My thyroid was removed back in 2005. So I had a very rare autoimmune disease called uh, Graves' disease. And what Graves' disease is a overactive thyroid. What t people tend to always hear is a uh, slow act, or well, I believe it's called um, uh, hypo. I, I, yeah, hypo th hypothyroid. And, and so essentially what that is, it's, it's hard for you to lose weight. I had the opposite. I got super skinny. I looked like a skeleton my senior year. I didn't know what was going on with my body. I, I, I'm a kid. I have no clue. Um, my eyes kind of bulged out a little bit. That was the first sign of Gray's disease. Uh, that was one sign that my mom picked up and she goes, oh my gosh, we need to take you to the, to the, to the doctor. I, I think something's wrong. People thought I was on drugs and I don't blame them. I went from a high school football player that beginning of the year, uh, pretty, pretty good size to skin and bones. I, I, I think the lowest I recorded my weight was about 126. Um, when I would just walk around at about 150, 160 in high school, uh, and I, we, we, went to the, we went to the doctor and they diagnosed me with Graves' disease. And they said, yeah, we need to take your thyroid out. And people would always like say like comment like, oh man, I wish I had that. I wish I could eat whatever I want and lose weight. No, you don't. No, you don't want this disease. It's very bad. And if I would have left it in there and not done anything, I would have died. Uh, so I had my, my long story short, after high school that summer, had my thyroid removed. I used that as an excuse for many, many years on why I couldn't get in shape, why people were um, fit and I wasn't. Well, that's not fair. They have a thyroid. I don't. If I had a thyroid, I could lose weight. Um, and it wasn't until I took that, um, that next step when I was 26 that I, I clearly found out that, wow, me not having a thyroid was not the, was not the issue. It was all the other things. I just used that as an excuse. And I love to share that story because I think a lot of us tend to do that. We always use that one thing that's going on in our lives and it could be anything, right? Well, you know, if I didn't have to work two jobs or, you know, if, you know, this so-and-so doesn't have to work, their, their parents are paying for anything or whatever it may be, right? Um, they always use that as an excuse. And what the, the number one thing I can say is, there will always be an excuse out there available for anybody to use. It's just up to you. Are you going to just keep leaning on that excuse, using that excuse? Or are you going to say, screw that, I'm going to push forward and, and, and I'm going to go after my goals and, and do what I need to do? And so it took me a long time, but I, I don't, obviously my thyroid is not my excuse anymore. I love that you say that because I find that we often use our excuses as a crutch in some way or another. Yeah. 
And so I've always tried to keep performing even when I have setbacks, but I used to be that same excuse maker, right? I mean, when I was young, my husband and I used to race motocross at an elite level. And uh, I mean, I used to win like all the East coast races and I was just like crazy about it. But then somebody would come in that would beat me if we went to a big thing and I'd be like, or they'd be like, Oh, this, she's so fast or whatever. But her parents used to, she used to live at a Millsaps training facility, right? Yeah. And ride like every day, all day. And here I am, I got kids, I got a full-time job. And I used to be like, yeah, well, so-and-so beats me because she rides all day, every day and trains at a professional facility. And I use that as a crutch. Yeah. And I had to learn to stop using that as a crutch or even as an excuse to get second. I mean, that was an excuse. It was bullshit, <laughs> but yeah, it is. I had to quit using that as an excuse in order to start winning. And I think that's how many of our lives are. We can't have a crutch. No, we can't. And I, I, that is something that I, I really hammer on my audience because again, all the, your excuses will change throughout the years, right? Like you said, you know, for me in the beginning, it was, well, I don't have a thyroid. Then after that, it was like, well, I work out of town. I have to commute an hour and a half to work, an hour and a half home. I'm super tired. If I worked near a gym or if I worked in my hometown, I would have time to go work out. There's always something, right? And and my audience um, are, 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 they range around, you know, 30 to 35 years old, which typically you have kids. And so what I want to hammer on my audience is do not use – that, you know, well, I have two kids, I have three kids, so I don't have time to work out. Trust me, nobody has time in this world. You need to make time. Your decisions dictate your priorities. Trust me. If you can watch that Netflix movie, if you can go binge watch whatever show's on, go watch a football game, your favorite college team, you have time to work out. When the kids go to sleep, Go to the living room, go to your garage or wherever that may be and get moving, get active. Nobody has time. You need to make time. I love that you say that because that is, I have a similar story for years. I didn't do anything right except for race dirt bikes and I still was gaining weight uh, because I was like, I don't have time. I've got kids. I can't figure out how to do it. I can't do it after work. I'm too tired the whole nine yards. Right. And then finally, one day I looked in the mirror and I was like, the only person that's going to make me look the way I want to look is me. And I started waking up at 4am every morning and I did stupid workouts. It was like, not stupid. I shouldn't say that. It was the, that stepping stone I needed to just keep yeah. adding. Right. But it was just a small little thing that made a huge, huge difference, which was three sets of squats, like 10, three sets of like 10 squats, three sets of like 10 pushups and three sets of like 10 sit-ups. That was it. That's all I did. And I started getting jacked. I'd be like, Hey honey, feel my quad. I got a muscle there, you know? (laughs) And my (laughs) husband probably got sick of me telling him this stuff. And then that's when the weight benches started coming in and all this stuff, because I was trying to figure out a way to make it happen. And I saw how much better I felt, how much better I looked and how much more respect I had for myself because I put the time in. Yeah, absolutely. I totally agree. So kind of on that same subject, how much blowback do you get from other adults that are using their kids and their family as a a crutch? I know I personally get so much flack. They're like, oh, well, I spend time with my kids. So that's why I'm not in shape or I try to be a good parent. I mean, I've gotten some serious flack. And I don't know if it's because I'm a mom or what. So what's that look like yeah, on your side yeah. of the bridge? So, so fortunately, no, I don't. And, 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 the, and this is the reason why, because if you know me and you follow me, I'm on everything, guys. I am on Facebook. I am on Snapchat. I am on Instagram. I am on YouTube. And you go look at any of my videos and there will be a common denominator. That is my family. I incorporate my family in everything I do. So If it's working out, yes, I'll go work. If it's working out at the gym, I'll go work out at the gym. But when I come home, it's like, so, okay, so I go to the gym. You're going to see a bunch of snapshots, Instagram stories of me working out. And then as soon as I get home, you'll see a bunch of Instagram, Snapchat stories of me with my kids cooking dinner, playing around, playing in their dollhouse, whatever that may be. Um, I I think that's probably the reason why is because I, I showcase my kids all the time because they are, they're everything. They are my life. They're, they're a part of my daily life. And 
I'm not, I don't look at myself as I'm some YouTuber fitness guy or I'm some Instagram weight loss story. No, I'm Logan Delgado, Goody Beats or whatever, the dad, the father, the husband, and who is always with their kids and spending time with their kids. So I, I think that may be why I, I, I've never got comments like that. If anything, it's funny, <laughs> the comments that I do get which I don't mind at all and I love is like, Logan, I'm not even into keto. I'm not even into fitness. I just come here to watch your kids. Like, <laughs> I just come here to see your They're kids. They're cute. <laughs> and, that's it. And, and, and I tell them like, Hey, I, I, I am not complaining if that's what, you know, so it's funny. Like they're just, yeah, I'll get random comments on YouTube. Like not, not here for you here for your kids. <laughs> like I'm totally cool with that. So yeah, I, I, you know, and my, my two little girls, they have, they have huge characters and huge personalities. And, and what I think what people love about me and maybe my story and my journey is that guys, I filmed everything. So you could go back two years ago and go see me and my wife vlogging when we're having our first child. <laughs> so I'm like, guys, we're here. We don't know what to expect. Crystal's contracting. We're, you know, we're going to pop this kid out in about three hours. And everyone's like, calmly like, <laughs> yeah, right. My first child, it took about 24 plus hours and they were right. So we were in that hospital for in labor for like, 26 hours it was awful because my wife couldn't eat she's hungry um but I, I i show everything so the birth of my 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 baby girl the the day that crystal and i found out we were we were pregnant uh to camila's first our second child's first birthday so i show everything and people it's so fun and it's so amazing when people come back like logan i haven't been on youtube in, in a couple of years but oh my gosh your little girls are so big now i remember when they were in pampers couldn't even walk crawling around and now here they are running around talking and so yeah, I, that is that's what it's all about for me and i don't do it for people i don't do it for anything else that YouTube is my diary. It's going to be my life's diary. And unfortunately I started, you know, I only started at 26. I wish I had, I wish YouTube was around when I was younger. Um, but it's going to be a diary for my kids and my kids, kids to go back and say, Hey, let me see how grandpa was. Let me see how, how, how much of a fool grandpa was. So when I'm there, 80 some years old can barely walk around. They can go back and check out my YouTube videos and see how much of a goofball I was and how, how, you know, fit I was for those couple of years. And I, I just think to me, that is something that I think is just super cool. I love that. And then also look at the example you're setting for your kids as far as nutrition, working out, living that lifestyle that you are, you believe in, you know, and, and yeah. doing it with a smile on your face is the biggest part of it. Yep, absolutely. So I really, really dig that. So moving on, you're the co-owner of Keto Coach. Can you That's tell correct. us a little bit about that? Yeah, yeah. So guys, uh, Keto Coach, uh, have one right here. So this is a Keto Coach right here. What Keto Coach is, it's a blood ketone monitor. So one of the coolest things about the ketogenic diet is that it's one of the only diets um, that you can do and test your blood to see if you're doing it correctly, which I think is super cool. There is no test that you can test your, your, your own body's biomarkers um, if you're doing paleo. There, there isn't a test saying, hey, this tells me I'm doing paleo correctly, or vegan correctly, or carnivore correctly, right? Um, but the ketogenic diet, you can. And so that is something that is just super cool. And so Matt Payne, which is the co-founder, my business partner, founded co uh, founded uh, keto coach which is the blood ketone monitor i came in a little bit later uh, became co-owner and our number one priority our number one goal is to make a ketone monitor at the most accurate on the market the most affordable and the most reliable and we did it okay because before then nobody wanted to test ketones because they had they had the stigma that Oh, you know, that that's, that's, it's too expensive. You got to be rich to, to do that wrong. No, you don't. We've come in and we just, we, we changed the whole market. Our strips when we came in were the most affordable strips that you can get and the most accurate. 
And so we gained a big, we gained a big support system from the keto community, just naturally. Um, we, we, we had big companies like ketogenic.com, um, which is owned by Ryan, uh, Dr. Ryan Lowry. He went in and did a video, which really helped us. And again, this was n nothing, this wasn't, we had nothing to do with this. He went and got all the monitors that you can get, uh, blood ketone monitors, and tested them all for accuracy, um, um, reliability, and ours was the number one. And we were like, yes, we, cause we knew that we, we knew that we, we, but you know, if you hear it from us, obviously people are going to say, well, could, of course you're going to say your company is the best. Um, but when an outside source tests, tests them all and doesn't have a bone to pick with anybody, uh, went and tested it and confirmed that ours was the most accurate and affordable. It really changed the game for us. And again, we, we had a huge team of, of keto people and, and, and it's just amazing where we've where we've gone in the last two years and so we fast forward so now we just launched our first ever app and the app is called the fast coach app and what i think is so cool and gets me so hyped up when i talk about this app is that no longer do you have to be dedicated to a diet to use this app so for for instance you, you know, you, you dabbled into paleo. Cool. You can use this app to help you. Um, it, you're going to be able to track your fasting times if you're into intermittent fasting in real time. Um, if you're into keto, you're also going to be able to test your ketones. Um, you're also, if you're a type two diabetic and you want to track your glucose levels, boom, you can track your glucose levels. If you're into bodybuilding, working out, training, and you want to track your energy levels, boom, you'll have a, a dial for that. And so if I could, I wish I could show you how it looks. Uh, the screen will probably, um, probably won't pick it up, but I, it's just such a cool home screen. Uh, let's see, let's see. Uh, Almost right there. Right there. Sweet. So as you can see, each four of those dials right there are all your body's biomarkers. So we strive to be like the Peloton of health. You may have heard of Peloton. What is Peloton? They're a bike, right? It's just a bike. What is, what? There's a bike everywhere. But where they changed the game is that they, they built a community. Mm -hmm. They built a community of doing these live, these live classes. So what we quickly found out is that the ketogenic community, the health community thrives when you do these community challenges, when you do these group challenges. That is where we just thrive because we all do it together. We all motivate each other. We all inspire each other. We tag each other. It, it's so great when we, when we do something as a community. And so we wanted to bring that feature to our app. And so that is one of the coolest things about our app you'll be able to participate in live and on-demand challenges with your favorite coaches. And we are building, we're building the dream team of the keto space and intermittent fasting space. So, so far we have Dr. Jamie Seaman, Dr. Mm -hmm. Fit and Fabulous. I don't know if you're familiar with her or not. Yes, yes I am. Uh, Jamie was on the Titan games this year with the rock, mm -hmm. which I'm jealous. <laughs> <laughs> and she killed it on there. We have Danny Vega, which is just, I mean, I can't say enough about Danny Vega. He's just a great guy, great human being. We have Keto Savage, Robert Sykes, mm -hmm. Mike Munsell, um, Myra, Low Carb Love. We have Yemeni Mesa, which is the owner of Keto uh, Hecabars. We have Dr. Ryan Lowry, the owner of ketogenic.com, and the list goes on and on. We have a, a just an amazing set of team that we're all going to be doing these challenges our own style. So, for instance, when you do a Peloton class, you may like, oh, I like when Jake does it. He's, he's just funny. He's motivational. Or, you know, I like when Sarah does it. She's so cool and calm, and I like her vibes. That's how our app will be. You'll be saying, oh, I love when Goody does a challenge. I, 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 love, I love his personality. Or, hey, I really want to dive into the science and the numbers. And, and, and so you'll love when you to do a challenge with like Mike Munsell, who mm -hmm. loves to dive into Mike's science. Mike's awesome. Yeah. And yes, and really get into the nitty gritty science of it. And so there'll be challenges and there'll be content for everybody. It doesn't matter what um, level of journey you're on, whether you're a beginner in the middle or you're an advanced user. Um, 
there'll be a challenge for you. And so that is what I think is something that's super cool. Nobody has done. And so instead of using, needing to use four different apps to post your body's biomarkers and log your body's biomarkers, all you need is one plus the online challenges. And so I get pretty hyped when I talk about it because it's something that really we have been working on for the past two years. Uh, this app has changed from what we originally wanted it to be to where it is today. It is constantly changed um, because we learned what people want, what people really want and what people really need. And I couldn't be more proud of the app and the team that we've built and the supporters we have backing us. It's really been a dream come true. And I'm, I'm so grateful to this day to be able to just have friends in the, in this community space who who genuinely support us it, it's a blessing i'm so blessed and i totally love that and i've noticed the same thing uh i was on robert sykes podcast as a guest a while back and all of a sudden i had all these people adding me on instagram and things and messaging me and they're like oh that was great and and uh it, it's funny because some of these people are really well known people in the ketogenic community maybe even you being one of them i'm not sure I'm, I feel like maybe you, I don't know how I got connected with you, but I, I, I saw you through, I, I saw you through Robert Sykes. Podcast. Okay. That's yes. what I knew. That's we got how, connected somewhere. And, um, it was funny because there's a couple of them now that I'm like close friends with. We don't even talk on Instagram anymore. We're like texting. I'm like, Hey, this happened this morning. This is so cool. And you're constantly yeah. learning. And then, you yeah. know, one of the other ones, she's a cyclist and I recently got into endurance cycling, which has been a whole nother mind blowing experience because Everybody says you can't be an endurance athlete if you're yep. ketogenic, right? You got to be pounding goose and stuff. Yeah, you got to, yeah, exactly. Those goose, yes. And so I have these people that I go riding with, they're pounding goose every 45 minutes. And here I'm 80 miles in and I'm fasted and I feel great. <laughs> and and they're yes. like, don't you got to eat? Like you're going to bonk out <laughs> and all these crazy things. And so it's really, really cool that the, these people that I've never even met that I'm like buddies with. <laughs> <laughs> because yeah. it's we're all so supportive of each other and 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 the experiences we have and learning and teaching each other and it's just a great thing yeah it's it's funny i i spoke about this yesterday on a live i did and i said you know the people that i've met through the ketogenic community i can literally call some of my best friends today and i trust them and they're and i can rely on them right and it's, it's, it's sad when I have people in my hometown that I've known all my life that I, I, I if I needed something, I don't think I could, I, I could call them. I, I, they would, I couldn't rely on them when I have people in the keto space. Some of them I've never even met. Some of them I've only met a couple of times through these expos, but we're so close to each other through social media, through constant messages, like you just said, that I know if I ever need anything, they would genuinely, genuinely be absolutely open arms. What do you need, brother? Just tell me, let's do it. And, and like I said, I, I'm, it's, it just speaks volumes for the keto community. I, I love them to death. And like you said, I, I, I came before I found the keto community, I came from the fitness industry. And so it, it which is a horrible, horrible industry, uh, very cutthroat, very, what can you do for me? I won't do that for you. You know, no, I'm not going to post that. I'm not going to reach out that out for you because um, that may take away people from me. The keto community does not think like that. We don't think like that. We don't try to, um, you know, well, if I reach out you out or if I do this, or, you know, it's, it, it's going to take away audience from me. No, we don't think like that. We are all one. And the more and more we share with each other, the more and more we build together, we grow together. And again, I'm, I'm just so blessed to have the keto, keto community and have found them. I love that. And you know, it's funny you say that about the cutthroatness of the fitness industry. I mean, I haven't been in the game that long. We're going on five years here now, but the thing is, is like, I started having this idea in my head and I was like, 
as a medical professional, which is my full-time day job, hopefully not for long type of deal, uh, but as a medical professional, we go to study clubs and we, we talk with other business professionals about things that are working for them, things that aren't working for them, ways to engage their patients, all of these things, things on health updates. And I was like, the fitness community really needs something like that, where mm -hmm. fitness professionals can get together and actually talk and bounce ideas off of each other. And so I wanted to launch it locally here, like a fitness study club. And I recently started putting the wheels in motion for that. And I actually found another trainer that I am close with that is not cutthroat at all. And we talk all the time and have a lot of the same beliefs. And and I was like, hey, can you help me get this going? And so we've started getting the wheels going on getting people other trainers in the community together. Don't be afraid to give away your secrets. The more we can help people live a healthy life, that is what matters. It's not about the almighty dollar. Let's yeah. get together. Let's see what we can do to be the best trainers that we can be. And don't be dogmatic about other people's views on things because oh, some people have things that work for them or their clients that maybe you haven't tried or maybe you're a little afraid of, but it's not going to hurt anything to listen to their piece of the, the puzzle. So um, yeah, I, I love that you say that because I, I feel like the fitness community does need to support itself more and they people need to work together more and they will actually see more success that way yep 100 percent, 100 percent. so on to the next subject here let's talk about your diet and what your ketogenic diet looks like i know you do things a little more um non-traditional when it comes to keto uh you do have lots of cheats and things you throw in there a different ketogenic lifestyle lifestyle you also cycle your keto Yep. Um, you're more yep. cyclical keto, which is how I am. I feel like my body thrives that way. I also feel like there's a lot of dogma with the ketogenic community. They're like, well, you're just a sugar burner and blah, blah, blah. <laughs> well, what happens if you stay keto forever? You're going to be just a, a fat burner. <laughs> so, yeah. so let's be the point of metabolic flexibility is to yeah. be metabolically flexible and flex those muscles, you know? So I like to cycle my, my lifestyle, my ketogenic lifestyle, and it works really great for me. And I believe you do the same. Yeah. So again, I've been doing keto since early, early 2013. And guys, your goals, um, things are going to change, right? Things are going to change during your journey. And so when I first started, you have to understand I was in it for weight loss. I was in it to get healthy. I was in a very bad spot. Uh, metabolically, you know, pre-diabetic, high blood pressure, high cholesterol, almost obese. And so the way I did keto back then was to strictly lose weight, lose body fat and get healthy. Well, guess what? I lost 70 pounds. I can't have that same mentality. I can't eat that same way. I don't want to lose any more weight, right? Um, I wanted to start focusing on building muscle. And so that's when I, I started getting into bodybuilding. And I started experimenting with different ways of doing the ketogenic diet. I've done carnivore. I've done OMAD. I've done TKD. I've done CKD. For those of you who don't know what TKD is, TKD is a targeted keto. And so essentially what that is, is I would have a little, you know, a little cup of rice before my workouts or after, preferably for me, it would be before my workouts and use that extra boost, that extra uh, bit of glucose to, so I can perform even more in the gym. And then I've done cyclical keto, which is, you know, having a refeed day. Now, one thing, if you're, if you're listening to this right now, listen up, listen up. Cyclical keto is not, a, a refeed day is not the same as a cheat day. I'm going to repeat myself. A refeed day is not the same as a cheat day. That is the biggest misconception when I was doing a cyclical keto. My refeed days are very boring. They're very strict. Yes, I'm eating carbs, but it's very um, planned out. Essentially, I just flip the, the keto spectrum. So with, with, with uh, keto, you're eating high amounts of fat, moderate protein, very, very low carbs. On a refeed day, it just flips. So I'm eating very, very, very low fat, moderate protein, high carbs, right? I'm not eating cinnamon toast crunch. 
I'm not eating a bagel. I'm not eating a granola bar. I'm not eating pasta. I'm not doing that. My carbs are very basic. I think I only experimented with four different carb sources when I do CKD, which is oatmeal, um, sweet potato, white rice, and probably cream of rice, I would say. And maybe even some um, of those rice cakes, but that's it. That, that's all I did. That's pretty boring. People think a refi day is a cheat day where you can just eat whatever you want because it's a refi day. Um, and it's not. And so again, my goals have changed. My goals are constantly going to change. And so who knows what I'll do. Also, me being a bodybuilder, I keep my protein pretty high, guys. And so a lot of people, when I tell people my macros or show people what I eat, they're like, whoa, 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 bro, your protein's way too high. You're going to convert that protein into gluconeogenesis. And I'm just like, oh, my God, just bang my head right on the wall. Without diving into the science of it, it is very, very hard for your body to do that, to turn your protein into gluconeogenesis to the point where I don't even worry about it, okay? Um, and again, it, it all depends on how your goals are. I'm not dogmatic about the way people eat. I could care less. I, if you're a vegan and you got some good vibes, you got some big moods, you're spreading positive energy in this world, I want to be your friend. If you're the smartest keto person in the room or in the, or in the world, but you're a jerk and, and, and you think you're better than people, I don't want to vibe with you. I don't want to talk to you. I could care less. So do you get what I'm saying when I say that? I don't care about the way you eat. I, I care about is what type of person you are. That's what matters most to me. And so when people tell me, like, oh, bro, you're not doing keto. Oh, bro, you're not doing carnivore. Oh, bro, how can you have those carbs? That's why I tend to take a step back this year and last year from putting labels on the way I eat because that's a good way to put yourself in a box and just open criticism. Mm -hmm. What I do now is, you know what diet I do? I do the Goody Beats diet. Call it what you want. I don't care. Call it keto-ish. Keto call it ketovore. Call it carb cycling. I don't care. I do what's best for my body. I do what works for me. I've been doing this for since 2013, and I'm constantly learning what works for my body, what doesn't work for my body. And I just do me. And at the end of the day, I highly, highly recommend you do the same. Don't let anybody ever tell you you're doing keto wrong. Don't let anybody tell you you're doing carnivore wrong. You tell them, no, I'm doing keto. I'm doing carnivore my way. And so at the end of the day, do what works best for you. And if that is introducing a little bit of glucose, a little bit of carbs before your workout, then do it. If that's having a reefy day on a Sunday, then do it. You just got to do what works for you. Instead of bashing it and say, well, that doesn't work. Why don't you try it? That's why I've tried all these diets and found what works for me. I tried OMAD. I think it's great. It's just not for me. I tried carnivore. I love it. It's just not for me because I love macadamia nuts. I love avocados. I love cheese. I, I love having a little bit of heavy whipping cream in my, um, my coffee. And I love jalapenos. You know, I love these other things that people will be like, oh, that's not carnivore. That's not carnivore. And I'm like, just kick rocks. Get out you of know, here. You know, it's funny because in a podcast long ago, I uh, said something like that. I was like, listen, if you're out to eat and it's not paleo or it's not keto, the, the keto and paleo police aren't going to come and arrest you. At the end of the day, <laughs> it's doing what is going to make your life better. And yep. I think we have to think of that from multiple perspectives. That doesn't mean, oh, my life is better if I'm eating cake all day, but yeah. just those moments. And I feel that people need to savor those moments, right? Like if they're going to go out and enjoy this nice dessert, go out with their family or their friends and enjoy it together and, and make it a moment, you know, don't make it a sitting in my truck cramming little Debbie snacks and, and a <laughs> pint of ice cream before I get home because I don't want somebody to find out about it. Yeah. You know what? I want to I want to say this because I have a feeling this this podcast may come up before, uh, but if it doesn't, it's all good. So I want to I want to bring that up because I was like that, and I want everybody to listen to me when I say this. I was very hardcore with keto all year round to where when Thanksgiving would come, all I, and I knew I wanted to do keto right and keep everything keto. For me, family is everything. 
I have a huge family. I'm Mexican, so I got a big family where I'm from. And so on Thanksgiving, we have these huge get-togethers. And I would see family members that I haven't seen all year round. There are family members that I would see only strictly on Thanksgiving. And I remember that Thanksgiving just strictly being, oh, is this keto friendly? Oh, what what did my aunt put in here? What did my grandma put in here? Oh my gosh, is this going to knock me like ketosis? You know what I didn't remember? The memories, my family members, what we did that day. All I could think about was, oh my God, is this going to knock me out of keto? And I remember I told myself, I will never, ever do that again. So come this Thanksgiving, guess what, guys? I am not even going to think about macros. I'm not even going to think about what's in this food. I'm not even going to think about, is this keto friendly? Is this whatever? All I'm going to be focusing on is making memories, spending time with my loved ones, because guess what, guys? Life is too short and life is not guaranteed. I would never forgive myself if, if a family member passed away after that. And I didn't make any memories with them because all I could think about was, oh my God, what's in this, uh, this, this casserole or what's in this gravy? Is it going to knock me out of ketosis? That is ridiculous. And I will never, ever put myself in that situation. But at the same token, understand that that is, I understand that that is not going to be the way I eat every single day. That is one day, one day out of the year that for the most part, I am very strict to my diet. If you follow me, guys, I eat the same crap every single day, like clockwork. That's just the way I eat. It's become a habit. It's become a routine. I train at the same time every single day. I train, for, for, I do cardio every single morning. I do cardio after my workout, right? So everything I do 365 or 364 is not going to be ruined by one day of Thanksgiving, right? So that's how I look at it, making memories and just putting everything in perspective. If my daughters were to tell me, daddy, tomorrow's Saturday. So daddy, will you have pancakes with me? I'm not going to say, oh, I'm sorry, girls can't have pancakes with you. Cause it's not on my diet. Sorry. Go have that memory by yourself or go have pancakes by yourself. Hell no. I'm going to enjoy those pancakes with my daughters. We're going to make a mess. We're going to make them. We're going to enjoy them. And I'm going to forget about it. And then I'm going to go off and just keep continuing my fitness journey, continuing to eat healthy, continuing to work out. That little pancakes memories that I made with my daughter are not going to ruin all the work I put in. I absolutely love that. Like this morning, my husband woke up and he was like, hey, want to take our daughter to breakfast and before we take her and drop her off at school. And I was like, yeah, let's do it. So we <laughs> went out, I have to be gluten-free. So unfortunately I'm a little bit orthorexic or orthorexic when it comes to food, because I'm like, Oh my God, is there gluten in that? I do have to yeah. be that person that asks yeah. what's in things, unfortunately. But uh, yeah, we went out. There's our favorite gluten-free restaurant. I got stuffed French toast with syrup and oh cottage God, cheese and nice. everything on top of it. And it was probably not the best thing for me. But guess what? My diet's on point 98% yeah. of the time. Yeah. And I also find that because the longer I'm in ketosis, the better my body handles the glucose load when I do yeah. throw it on it. And especially yeah. with this cycling, I've noticed that it, I'm pretty much back into ketosis if I do kick myself out within a day or hours. Um, sure. And that I, I'm super, like my body just tolerates that load so much better because it, it knows how to go both directions. Yeah. I, I um, you know, I, I lost my train of thought, but what I, I think what I was going to try to say is that, um, yeah. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Complete brain fog. Right. Okay. So you're right. What you, what you have to realize is like you just said, what, what you just ate this morning, your French toast, imagine eating like that every single day, right? That is what I used to do from 18 years old to 26 years old. I used to eat like that every single day, every single meal. So if I have that even if I have that once a week, you have to look at it on the grand scheme of things. I used to eat like that minimum three times a day, seven days a week. 
Now, fast forward into my fitness journey, my fit life, one meal out of that whole week. It's not going to ruin everything, guys. And again, it just all depends on where you're at in life. Now, if I was getting ready for a bodybuilding show, obviously, I wouldn't do it. But I'm not. I'm not getting ready for any show right now. I'm just living my life. I'm just living my healthy fitness journey where I can balance that in. At the end of the day, it's all about balance. I love that. And I try to preach that. And I mean, obviously there's an acclimation period when you start a ketogenic diet. If you are keto for like three days and then you eat a bunch of cookies and then you do that same thing, then it's going to be a little bit harder to train your body. But like you said, in the grand scheme of things, it's better than maybe where you're at. And that's something you have to build on every single day. Yep. I love that. Well, if you could tell my listeners anything at all, what would you want them to know? I want them to know that it's never too late to become what you might have been, okay? And at the end of the day, like I mentioned before, nobody has time. You need to make time. Nobody's going to care if you fail. No one's going to care if you didn't lose weight. No one's going to care if you didn't reach your goal. At the end of the day, you need to do it for yourself, okay? You are the star of your show. Everybody else is just sitting on the sidelines. So don't listen to the haters. Don't listen to the naysayers. Don't listen to the doubters. You have one life to live and one life only. And this life is very, very short. What are you going to do? Preach it, brother. That was great. If people want to find you and follow you and see your smiling face every single day in their Instagram stories, where do they do that? You can find me at Goody Beats on Instagram, at Goody Beats on Snapchat, um, Logan Delgado on Facebook, Goody Beats on YouTube, and the real Goody Beats on TikTok because as a social media person, you have to have everything, right? So unfortunately, if you're on TikTok, don't worry. I'm not going to do any dances because I can't dance. Um, So that's where you can find me. And if you don't care about keto and fasting, but you just want to see two beautiful uh, baby girls, then come follow me. I love it. You'll be making your coffee in the morning and zoom, there one of them goes. I just love that. It's great. And I'm, and how about Keto Coach? How can people get hooked up with that? Yes. Out that app. So you guys can go to ketocoachx.com and you can go to the Google store and Apple store to download the fast coach app today. It's free. Um, Tons of content, tons of things you can do on it. Join the community and let's do these live and on demand challenges together. I love that. Well, thank you so, so much for sharing your outlook and all that with my listeners. I really appreciate it. And I'm so excited for them to connect with you on social media. Me too. Thank you very much. Thank you for having me. It was a pleasure. I love, I love this. I love doing this. Thank you, Goody.